Please note, the following podcast contains adult language and sexuality and is suitable only for adult listeners. Electric acid. Did I ever date? I dated Jerry Buss, the owner of the Lakers. We dated for two years. And, but I never, I, I went for the owners, not the players. Well, you know, level up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your host, Yvette Lopez. I'm a former Playboy Maxim and FHM model. Currently, I'm a singer, compassionate healer, and an entrepreneur in wellness and fashion. Welcome to our show. Hi, I'm Yvette Lopez, and you're listening to Bodacious Minds. Today, I have with me my co-host, Dina Carmen, who's a dear friend of mine, and we will be interviewing... Malvin Fowler, who's an ex-pro football player. Uh, We're going to get down to the nitty gritty of being in the football world and see how he got later played. Hi, Dina. Hi, Yvette. How are you? Good to see you. I see that you have a little bit of a horse voice. I do have a horse voice today. I I don't want to call it a horse voice. I'd like to call it raspy or sexy, right? Just uh, rock and roll, maybe. Let's do that. I like the raspy. (laughs) <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I apologize for that. Been pulling some long hours helping open up the Blue Martini here in Buckhead, Atlanta, and uh, it's been a good time. So, Good for you, Ben. So why don't you tell the listeners about yourself and maybe then you and I, if you don't mind, get into how we met and then how our friendship continued to grow? Sure, sure, sure. So I've been in the nightlife hospitality industry for about 20 years, going to date myself. I've helped open up nightclubs. I've run performance art production companies for nightclubs in Miami, here in Atlanta. I've worked in Vegas, LA, just run the gamut in that. I was a former singer and I am an artist and I'm an entrepreneur. Look at you. The sexiness comes out. Yes. So Dina and I met about, I don't know, how many years ago was it, Dina? I I, I was 26. I do have to say, because, well, because I was married. I was married. I actually, um, that's how I remember. I think I started to plan my divorce when I met you. (laughs) So for those of you that want to know how we met, I'll let Dina tell the story because she she remembers a little bit more than I do from like when we locked eyes. So uh, can you tell us, Dina, sure, to refresh sure. my memory? I was visiting Tampa to hang out with all my guy friends for a housewarming party. We all went clubbing and we went to Ybor City and my guys were like, oh, we're going to go to this club first to meet up with this guy friend of ours. And uh, we got there and he had Yvette with him and I couldn't even be bothered to be introduced to anybody else <laughs> after that. <laughs> I just wanted to hang out with you (laughs) for the whole rest of the night. So we left that club and we went to another one, right? And I kept going, but where's that girl, Yvette? Can we go find her? Can you bring her back? Like all night long, I just complained because I wanted you to come back. And you're like, hey, look, I promise she's going to come to the house warming for the after party. I was like, are you sure? Are you sure? And sure enough, she did. And yeah, I stole her away (laughs) from the guy she was hanging out with. He's forgiven me since then, but I definitely stole her. That's so funny because I would have never hooked up with him anyway. So he, his chances weren't even, you know, <laughs> it was, a, it was just him living a fantasy. He, totally not my type, but a sweet guy. I was married and my husband had disappeared, I think for a week. And so I had decided to go out and just let my hair down. And we, I did, we, I met Dina. She's absolutely gorgeous. And I just remember being at the, at our friend's house or apartment. And Dina took my hand (laughs) and pulled me into a bedroom. And then we started to have a little fun. We locked the doors and then you will leave it to your imagination, (laughs) which was one of the best things ever. I have a really good friend now uh, for, I think, 20 years. And I actually, it was the first time I ever cheated on my husband. (laughs) <laughs> Sorry, guys. And then I wanted a then I wanted a divorce. Uh, I'm honored. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's wonderful. I I don't know if I would have. You know, it's so funny because when you find yourself in these weird relationships, you never know what's gonna kind of flip the switch for you to leave. And being with you and having that experience really just made me realize that it was not the place for me to stay or be. And so anyway. 
here we are 20 years later. Have you ever dated a football player? Have you ever gone into the... I have not dated a football player. Well, maybe my current boyfriend used to be a football player in high school. But no, I dated a sports agent who had like 32 players under his belt. And then he thought he was like Jerry Maguire because I was a young single mom. And he just wanted to lock it down quick and come to find out he screwed some players over for some money. And I, now I can't even say his name because I'm like, ooh, he wound up not being a good guy. It was not Jerry Maguire at all. <laughs> That's so funny. Did I ever date? I dated Jerry Buss, the owner of the Lakers. We dated for two years. And, but I never, I I went for the owners, not the players. Well, you know, level up. (laughs) (laughs) I was really good friends with Dennis Rodman for, you know, I still am. I never dated him (laughs) because, yeah, and he was a lot of fun, lot, very flirty, but I was friends with, I've been friends with Carmen Electra for a very long time. So I just usually don't bang my friends ex-boyfriends or boyfriends, you know, it's just not a thing that I do. I did it once to still, I dated my girlfriend's ex-boyfriend to steal the dog. So I, he, yeah. So I have this dog. I've had him for about 13 years and my girlfriend was dating this guy and he was abusive to the dog. So I pretended to like the guy and then I was able to steal the dog away. And then he found out later and hates my guts till this day. But oh, well, I got the dog. Oh, well, <laughs> you are the ultimate dog rescuer. Look what you had to endure to rescue a dog. I don't know how many people can say that. It will let you eat my vagina if I can have your dog. <laughs> I'll allow it. <laughs> I'll allow just that. It doesn't go any further than that. <laughs> and it did want. <laughs> It's so I had to tell my girlfriend, like, probably a year after, like, I swear to God, I didn't sleep with him. We just, I didn't go down on him, but I, I let I her know. I only let him go down on me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, yeah it's, he had to pay the price. <laughs> what, else, you know, what else can we talk about that's like, you know, what I you know, know. Just, I want to know something, because there's things, you know, I know so much about you that it was like hard for me to, you know, when you asked me to do this with you, I was like, what questions am I going to ask you, vet that I don't already know, or maybe that the world doesn't know? And I don't know if you've told your viewers yet, you know, but obviously I think everybody knows you're a Playboy model, but I want to know like when, and I, and I know that you were one of the first Latin Playboy models, which is so hot by the way, but when, did you get your first cover and how were you discovered? It was so bizarre. I got asked a lot to be in Playboy. If it, it was when I was shooting for Greg Gorman when I was 17. Then it was, I, I think I was 17. I might've even been a 16. I don't remember. I'm really bad with time. And then I was approached at the mall here in Vegas. And so Playboy always had my name. I was dating a Cuban guy and he was very strict when I was 17. And so when I broke up with him, I had turned 18 and I reached out to Playboy and I said, okay, I'm ready. I'd love to shoot for you guys. And I shot here in Vegas with David Meese and we're still really good friends. I came out in 1995. I did seven issues of the um, special editions. I did do the first all Latin Playboy magazine. And then I started to work with Playboy Latin America. I was in Latin America doing runway shows at and being a model for Playboy bikini line and things like that. And so, it, you know, it, it was my life. It, re- it was a fun time in my life. It's, uh, the, it's a career I had till the age I was uh, of 35. I think I, I stopped working with Playboy and working with, you know, modeling nude and things like that when I was 35. So yesterday. Um, so thank you, Hefner. Yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it wasn't for Hugh Hefner, I don't know what the fuck I would have done, I swear to you, because I was so young when I left home and didn't know what I was going to do with my life. And I I talk about it a little bit in another episode, how my Jewish aunt's daughters were in Playboy and they, you know, she told me to, that I should start modeling and she kind of opened me up to that world. And and I'm happy, you know, I, I have no regrets. It was a really good time and it opened a lot of doors and it could have, I could have used it more to benefit me in better ways. But I was so fucking young that I had, I, I, I didn't know what I was doing. I just, you know, whatever came my way, I kind of, I took it and I, I had a lot of fear in me. So I, I didn't 
I didn't take advantage of it the way I should have. And I wish I would have because I know that my life would have been a lot easier, I, you know, financially um, and emotionally, and, you know, all those things. But I, I was young. I was partying. I, I got paid to party and I did. I, you know, I don't know. It was it was a cool, cool fucking experience. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, um, yeah. I think that, I mean, I'm pretty sure that most things happen for a reason. I can't say all things like I think I used to say all things happen for a reason. But I think that we're supposed to learn something from them, obviously. And sometimes we got to go through those, you know, hard times to become the people that we are now. And the woman that you are now is incredible. And he, had you not had your struggles, uh, you know, maybe you'd have been entitled and you might not have been this person of such great and spiritual depth that you are today. So I'm grateful True. that you took the path, however your path wound up. It, it led you to me and I'm happy yeah. and I'm grateful for it. <laughs> no, I, I, again, I have, you know, it's just, I had no guidance. So I learned everything on my own how to put on a tampon, how to have sat, you know, I didn't have I, everything. It was like, I had to figure everything out on my own. And it was, uh, it was, it, it was, I'm glad I'm, I'm happy. I, you know, I, I, I feel that my path has been very colorful and I, I've stayed humble. I've stayed honest. I, I'm a good human being, you know, so takes a lot of fucking work to be one, but <laughs> It does, right? That's not the easy road. Not at all. Well, Dina, let's um let's take a break and when we come back, we will have former pro football player Melvin Fowler. Hi, this is Dina Carmen. Welcome back to Bodacious Minds. Today we are interviewing Wait for it. You might know him as a former NFL center for the Minnesota Vikings, the Buffalo Bills, the Arizona Cardinals, the Detroit Lions, and the UFL's Florida Tuskers. He played college ball for the University of Maryland, where he never let a quarterback sack him in his four years as a starter, despite having only practiced 10 days for the starter position before getting the job. He was inducted into the Cleveland Browns after college. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Melvin Fowler. Hi, Melvin. How are you? <laughs> hey, guys. How are you doing? Hey, hey. Good to see you, Melvin. It's been a minute. Good to see you again. You're looking good. You know, all of that, I have to say, is a real testament to your divine talent and your tenacity. So just that's incredible to me. Uh, incredible. Yvette, do you have any questions you want to ask him? I, I have a lot. Well, no, you know, I have I have a ton of questions. I, I think what I, I the step I want to play on is like, Melvin, you know, you know, I always want to know, like, I know for myself being in the entertainment business, relationships were difficult and things like that. So, you know, I think that my my first question for you would be, was it easier to, you know, were the women in your life, were they there for the right reasons? Is it easier to get played in, in being an NFL player? Did you find relationships difficult? Those are the kind of questions that I have, you know, finding love. Was it hard, you know, in your industry? It was, it was difficult. Unfortunately, the NFL has, I think it's an 80, 85% divorce rate. I knew that going into, going into my career. So I was really skeptical with regards to getting close to women. I did find a couple of women that I've dated over the years of my career. I'm not married and I don't have any kids, but you know, it was hard. I did meet a lot of great women. There were some good times, some bad times, but you know, the, the NFL and I think all professional sports, it's kind of hard to, um, you know, find someone and sustain a the long one. relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Did you find like, is it, you know, I, we think in our minds, because I, I stayed away from really dating guys from sports and, and you can have anyone, right? Like weren't women throwing themselves at you all the time and wanting to, you know, so is, was it that, is it truly like that? Uh, to a certain extent, there are women who prey on athletes and I experienced that my rookie year. I think I was out at a club and a woman knew when I got drafted and it was just crazy to me. You just have to take it with a grain of salt and just keep your antennas up, so to speak. I know when it comes to boxing, I don't know if it's the same thing for football, but I, I, I know 
that they can't have sex before the games and things like that. Is it the same way for football or is it does it even matter? I don't think it matters. But with regards to before games, you know, we're kind of sequestered in a hotel before the game. So, you know, not much of that goes on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I you know, I, it's funny because when I thought that, I'm like, well, isn't that a good way to like relieve some stress? But I guess when they get into a boxing match, it's a little different than when you go out into the the field and you don't really have to punch someone in the face to 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 win. I, I was telling Dina actually about your shower in your home, the uh, baby making shower. <laughs> and I just absolutely love it. And I didn't remember if you had to turn on a light switch or was it from your phone and you can set the music and the vibe and the lights and, you know, creating that type of ambiance, it, you know, was pretty fucking sexy, Melvin. It, it just seemed to me like you had you, you had it on lockdown on how you were going to impress your women. Well, I got the, I, I can't take all the credit. You know, before um, I moved to Vegas, I got a chance to be friends with the Maloofs. And I would religiously stay at the Palms when, when I was playing football. And they have a lot of fantasy suites at the, in the fantasy tower at the, at the Palms. And I believe it was the G suite that had mood lights and steam and, music and it kind of gave me like the idea to do that in my own home and I think I was able to pull it off minus the uh sliding bookcase and the stripper pole <laughs> <laughs> no I think you could do without the stripper pole it's sexy enough the guys actually the producers are asking me if I had showered there yet I'm like wait well what? no not yet <laughs> it's quite, it would be a lot of fun to experience that shower and I love I just wrote it down the g-suite I'm gonna have to take my husband and try to let him get to the G spot. <laughs> <laughs> so Dina, yeah, you know what? You, you want to jump in and ask some questions? You had yeah, some really. Yeah, I do. Uh, I do. I want to take it back to like pre-football, though. Let, let's talk about your your high school days for a minute. Where did you grow up? Where did you go to high school? I grew up in Long Island, New York. I went to Half Hour Hills High School West. It's a uh, small public school in Suffolk County, in uh, Dix Hills. Okay. And you played high school football? Yes. And did the girls, were, were the girls interested in you then because you played football? Did you date cheerleaders maybe? No, I wasn't really into girls. I was actually more focused on school and, and sports. And I think that's probably why I was able to, you know, receive athletic and academic scholarships at a high school because I was really focused. That's right. Wow. I hear you're super, super smart, actually. And recently discovered that the center position is considered one of the most intelligent positions uh, in ball. And can you tell us why? Tell our listeners why that is. Well, the, the center position is kind of like the the babysitter of the of the team. So basically, a lot of people depend on me to tell them where to go and what to do, including the quarterback. So, you know, you can only imagine how important that position can be when you have 10 other men basically depending on you to tell them what to do. That's amazing. That's sexy, Melvin. It is sexy. It's good for you. It's like, <laughs> it, it just shows us you have control. <laughs> She's you know, control. Melvin... You were friends with Hugh Hefner. And as I, I think I've told you, I was in Playboy. And, you know, I always find it very interesting when Hugh Hefner gets close to someone. And you you had mentioned to me how you guys had met. He wanted to introduce his son to a pro football player, correct? Well, actually, it's kind of like a six degrees of separation. So I was in Cleveland playing for the Browns and I met a gentleman who worked for Maxim, who was in town with a bunch of playmates, and they actually surprised me, came in for my birthday, and I became friends with all these playmates, and one of them was good friends with Kimberly Conrad Hefner, he, he was ex-wife, and she's like, oh, Hef has two sons, Marston and Cooper, they would love to meet a professional football player, would you mind hanging out with them? So I set up a lunch date at the Mondrian with myself, Marston Cooper, and their bodyguards, and then I went to the mansion that night and then I met Hef and literally I was at every party in the off season and it was awesome. How fun. Did, what, what was your take on Hugh Hefner? He was awesome. We actually had a lot of mutual friends. I believe he dated Tina Jordan and, you know, I was good friends with Ava Fabian, Carmela de Caesar, Penelope Jimenez, Lauren. But yeah, they, all the girls were great. Hef was great. And it was literally the best times of my life going to I, his yeah. parties at his house. 
Yeah, he was he was the, one of a kind. I I I know there'll never be another Hugh Hefner, but I always find it interesting to meet people that were in his life, like on a, a you know, like really in his life, because everybody can say they met Hugh Hefner and they know Hugh Hefner, and he didn't let just anyone in. Uh, and, especially, and, you know, and, and, and it was funny because if you weren't up to code, he banned you from his house. <laughs> I yeah. Know. Yeah. A couple of people that have been banned from inappropriate behavior at his house. Everyone thought like if you went there, you got you went there to get laid. And I never got laid there. I don't know. I guess I wasn't lucky enough to to, <laughs> to get laid at Hugh Hefner's house. But I just found it his parties, the parties that I went to and the experiences I had there were very classy, very mature. And then I noticed later on as I got older, I was in Playboy when I was 18. Uh, and then as I got older, I think like in my mid thirties going to his house, it started to get a little cheesier for me. You know, people were able to pay now to be at his house. And now Q Hefner was older. So I think he lost a little bit of control over what was happening at the mansion. But don't you feel lucky enough? Like you got to experience this with the man at the time you did when it was real playboy, classy, sexy, sophisticated. Not many people can say that. Yeah, it was it was awesome. Um, fight night, movie night, midsummer night, um, Halloween. Mm-hmm. I mean, all all the events that he had at his house. I mean, charity poker tournaments. One of them I finished like ninth. That was a great experience. Wow! Um, it, it was it was it was a lot of fun. Good for you. And I I was telling Dina. Dina and I were talking, and I know I haven't known you that long, but I've met your the woman in your life now. And I was telling her about how she has introduced you to a healthier way of living and eating. And that did come from her, correct? Like she's now you're a pescatarian and you don't eat meat. And I mean, that came from her. But, you know, when I retired 10 years ago, before I knew her, I lost 85 pounds and 20 percent body fat. And, you know, I just been coming up with new different ways to stay healthy and you know, I met Elizabeth a couple of years ago and I literally kind of adapted her lifestyle with regards to not eating meat. And I love it. And I, it's so weird how I used to be this big football player eating steak and chicken and, and all this, all this food is meat. And, you know, I don't do it or I don't really need it anymore. You don't miss it, right? I don't miss it. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I don't miss meat either, but I, I just love the, you know, just showing that a woman can enter someone's life and she's introduced you to this healthier way of living. So hopefully we can keep you around a lot longer than maybe you would have if you were eating as healthy. And I just, I, I think she's very sweet. I, I, I really like her a lot. Hopefully one day we can have her on the show as well. But um, Dina, you had some other questions that I thought that were very interesting. You, Before I go into her, her questions, I had mentioned to the producers that your mom your mom made you these books. I had gone to your house. I didn't realize that you were a pro football player. I thought you were a fan. I had seen all these jerseys and helmets and I didn't realize that you played professionally. And then you brought out the books that your mother had made for you. What? So are these, were, how did that happen? She makes these books for you. Are they your games? Can you tell me a little bit about the that? Oh yeah, well, my mom and dad actually have never missed a game that I played in any sport since I was five. So I've been been really fortunate and blessed with regards to that. They've been to every single home and away game at every level. And I believe it was after my freshman year in college, my mom started making these scrapbooks. And the scrapbooks contains pictures from the game weekend, pictures from the actual game, newspaper clippings, and it it just evolved to this amazing, wonderful thing where every year from my freshman year in college up until my last year in, in the NFL, there's basically these thick scrapbooks that contain wow. all these memories. And it, it truly is amazing. And I, and I showed you and I'm just really blessed and fortunate that she was able to construct that. From- yeah, that's pretty fucking cool. My, my family never even put a you know, book together for me for anything. So I have no memories of my childhood. So that's pretty awesome to have that support of your parents. And and I know that you played nine years, correct? Eight years in the NFL. Eight years. That's a long time because isn't it usually people are there like, what, three years? Why is it that people are in it for three years? Is it because of all the, the 
trauma to the body? It's a combination of things. It's basically, you know, it's the most brutal sport there is. And then also all the owners are basically all the teams. They are constantly looking for somebody younger and cheaper. Younger and cheaper. So they're cheap. I don't understand. Well, the more years you play, the more that these owners have to pay you. And um, when you get up into years, it's kind of like a veteran minimum. So it's kind of like, you know, Melvin costs $2 million and we have to pay him that or nothing at all. Or, Mm. you know, Michael, who's coming out of college or a second year player that costs $300,000, $400,000. Wow. And And probably do the same job as Melvin. Wow. And then you, how did you manage to continue for nine years? How did that, how did you get so lucky? Or eight years, how did you get so lucky? I guess, you know, it's kind of like I was that good and they couldn't say no. Good for you, Melvin. Very impressive. I'm telling you, divine talent right there. And obviously incredible intelligence too. And they knew they needed to keep you around. I think that's incredible. It's just incredible. I met you briefly that night at Yvette's, uh, went to Vegas for her little get together for her birthday. And I got to meet you briefly that night. And we weren't introduced on that level at all. You know, and I have to say that for not eating meat, sir, you are still a giant man. I just want to let you know <laughs> you are. And you seem to me a gentle giant. So that's kind of a, a lead in. I think that some of my questions, you know, just one thing that really stands out to me that I'd like to know about you more like as as the man, you know, the role model and as a mentor, are you at all interested in, in, in being a mentor to the youth? Like, where does that stand with you? That's huge. Any chance I get, whether it's, you know, I'm at my gym and there's like, you know, high school players or college players that I come across, you know, I definitely try to help them out and give them guidance that I, I received along the way to pass it along to help them out. So I'm definitely interested in in paying it forward and and helping out other athletes and other kids. That's fantastic. I'm super proud of you. Let's see what do we what else do we have? I have so many questions for you. Honestly, we may not have time for for all of them. <laughs> well, no, you, you know, Dina started a, a a bit. I think I might have told you a little something about it, Melvin. The fearless females of sports, shining the light on the women in in sports. Dina came up with this idea. She grew up with her her grandparents, right, Dina? Your grandparents watching sports, your grandma? Yeah, so I grew up in a football house. My mother works at Auburn University. Uh, She was in the, she was the secretary in the football department. And back when Bo Jackson played for Auburn University. So I got to meet Bo Jackson as a little girl. But uh, my mom and my grandma scream at the TV at all the SEC games every weekend. And that's what actually kind of inspired me to bring about an event, Ladies Heart Football, for female football fans because we really don't have anything like that and that spun me more into the direction of acknowledging women that are on and off the field within the NFL and across uh, the other boards maybe even flag football and starting an award program for women in football so that's the fearless females of football and then we've taken it another step further to where we're the fearless females of sports and touching upon all of the different uh, sports that women are involved in. And I've been doing a lot of research on all of this, and it's just incredible. Our, our journey has only been about 100 years for women in athletics, and we haven't gotten uh, a lot of praise for it until just within this this last decade, it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger, right? So one of the questions that I had for you is, what do you think about women in athletics and, and what's your take on women in football? I, I think women in athletics is amazing. Women in football is also great. I believe that my former coach, Bruce Arians, was the first head coach to actually hire a a female assistant head coach. I mean, a female assistant coach. Um, I forget her name. I believe it's Becky something, but she was working with linebackers. She was an assistant coach. And I think that we need more of that. Which team was this for? He was the head coach with the Arizona Cardinals when he hired her. And now he's the head coach for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But he was my um, offense coordinator with the Cleveland Browns. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, that lady's name was Dr. Jen Welter. Okay. She's a doctor and she's a female football player. And then she got hired as the first temporary assistant for the Cardinals. Yeah. Right. That, that was really amazing that he was able to do that. Yeah, really amazing. Melvin, do you find it hard, like women do, like, how do I say this? Like, do you think it's hard for men to adapt to women telling them what to do and, 
and, and, and maybe knowing more than they do? I think insecure, man. I mean, if I was a player and my head coach hired a female assistant, I would trust that that assistant was qualified enough to coach me and I would take coaching. But not everyone is, has that mindset. But I, I feel like the more that the more people that hire women in those positions, I feel like will help the transition and make it the, the new norm. Right, right, mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. So I think that's awesome. I really appreciate that you support women in sports like that. So the parent company to our fearless females of sports, fearless females of football, ladies heart football is called Lozen World. And we're starting a campaign for Lozen men. And what that is, is it's players, athletes who support women in athletics. And I'd like to ask you if you'd be honorarily uh, our first Lozen <laughs> men. She's putting you on the spot. She's putting you on the spot. <laughs> no, but <that's> so <laughs> you don't funny. have to say yes right now. <laughs> that's fucking that's that's hilarious. So I want to highlight all of the players, all of the athletes who verbally acknowledge that they appreciate or, or, you know, women in athletics. I've been doing a lot of research on it and we don't have a lot of men out there in sports in general saying anything about women in sports, like not a word, like peep. We've had a few NBA players say some good things about WNBA because they had a marketing campaign for it. But I haven't found one football player yet who has said that he appreciates women in athletics, both on or off the field. And you're my actual first one to say that. So. No problem. I'm glad to be yeah. the first. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And and Melvin, what do you like? Now we have the Raiders in Vegas. I just moved to Vegas and now I'm going to be the biggest Raiders fan. So I moved to Vegas just a couple months ago. And I know you've been here. How, you've been in Vegas. How, how long? Melvin, Ten have years. you been here? Ten years. Wow. So you're you're a native. Are you excited that we have a, a fucking football team now? I'm excited. I think it'll be good for the city. I just worry about some of the younger players who you know, I can't imagine being a rookie or a second year player being put in a city of sin. There's a lot of temptation. I just hope that they have the right people around them to make sure that they don't get into too much trouble. Mm, I didn't even think about that. You're right. Vegas is a very naughty place. Now with COVID, everybody's being a little bit more, you know, not so naughty. But yeah, that's a that's a very good take on it. I, I, I didn't think about that. I, I'm excited to have for Vegas to have something more, hopefully something more than just sex, drugs, and rock and roll, you know? And I, I thought maybe this will help our youth here in Vegas, like giving more to, the, to, to our youth here in Vegas, something more positive anyway. I grew up here and we didn't have much to look forward to besides going to an opening of a casino, you know, and getting into a fight. Fingers crossed there's more people like you out there that are men like you that will get out there and encourage our youth to take action in, in doing other things than just the strip party, strip clubs, things like that. So I was going to say, why did you move to Vegas? Well, I was here a lot in the off season and I had a lot of friends such as, you know, Maloose and that own casinos and clubs. And I figured I should cultivate my relationships, start my own company. So the NFL has partnerships with a bunch of business schools. So I went to Harvard Business at, for their executive entrepreneurial program. And I had my business plan all set to open up my own independent concierge casino hosting company. But then at, right before I was about to do that, my friends who own Tal Group, which is one of the largest hospitality groups in the world, asked me to help them open one of their venues. So I was thinking to myself, they were featured in in Harvard Business with a case study about how successful Marquee New York was. So I thought it was a no-brainer to learn with the best, get my feet wet before I did my own thing. And here I am 10 years later. (laughs) Are you still going to do your own thing? You think you branch off? Um, Probably one of these days. You know, at the moment, I'm fortunate enough to be a part of something great. And we're doing a lot of big things. We're in the process of Tau Beach 2.0 2021, which is going to be the Yay. largest pool deck in in the city, if not the, if in the country, if not the world. We have a lot of big things, and I'm just definitely very fortunate and blessed to be a part of it. Yeah, you know the Tau Group. They've sponsored most of my my like my birthday, and anytime I came out in a magazine and stuff, they would have my parties there. And the owners are amazing. So you are with the, some pretty cool people there. I, I yeah, I would I would love to be a host myself. What would it take for me to be a host, Melvin? What would I have to do? (laughs) 
to yourself, you're good. You're, you're good. <laughs> you think I could bring in the dough? I could bring in the men? For I always sure. Men and, you know, women spend money too, but usually, I don't know. Well, <laughs> thank you, Melvin, for being on the show and taking the time to come and share your thoughts and stories with us. And I appreciate you. And I'm excited to spend Thanksgiving with you and have some champagne and some, well, some toe furky for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was I appreciate it, you guys. You guys are awesome. Thank All right, you, my dear. Truly Till next it. time. All right. Sounds See you good. later. Okay. Bye. Bye. So we just had an amazing interview with Melvin Fowler here on Bodacious Minds. I'm Dina Carmen, and I'd like to thank you, Yvette, for having me on to be your co-host. Thank you, Dina, so much for being on. I love seeing your beautiful face, and I hope that you'll join me again. And until next time, remember to be smart, be sexy, own it. On the next episode of Bodacious Minds, join me and my sometimes partner in mischief, entrepreneur Megan Kane, as we reveal our wildest adventures. Thanks for listening, and thank you to my guest co-host, Dina Carmen and our special guest, Malvin Fowler. Bodacious Minds is a production of Electrocast Media. Our executive producers are Mark Netter and Peter Rafelson. Our editor is Kyle McCarthy. I'm your host and producer, Yvette Lopez. If you liked our show, please subscribe and give us a rating wherever you enjoy podcasts. And always remember, be smart, be sexy, own it. Electric acid.